Hello, you've caught me disappointingly bound by the laws of physics. The second law of thermodynamics determines my hair will continue to fall out as time moves forward, even if I use this caffeine shampoo my wife lovingly put in my stocking at Christmas. Newton's law of gravitation means I'll never be able to fly unaided, but I guess also means the atoms that make up my body continue to hold together and prevent me expanding into non-existence like a dead NP. So, swings and roundabouts. Anyway, if you want to escape the laws of physics, you can always try video games, because the only thing they're bound by is the limitless imagination of developers and budget. If I haven't said it enough times over the past 11 T Friday features, one of the best things about video games is getting to experience what you otherwise never would. The awe of visiting faraway fantasy lands, the thrill of being physically far more capable than you ever would be in real life, the satisfaction of escaping the depressingly real clutches of the laws of nature. Here are seven times video games told the laws of physics where to stick it. First up, we've got Gravity Rush 2, which, as its name suggests, takes more than a few liberties with that most famous of forces, gravity. Now, I'm guessing the starting point for Gravity Rush and its sequel came in a brainstorming session over at Sony's Japan studio when, while thinking of game ideas in the park, an apple fell from a tree above one of the developers' heads. Then, I'm guessing, the apple stopped in mid-air, changed the direction of gravity's pull, and flew off sideways with the help of a cat made of space. And that's the true story of how they got the idea for Gravity Rush. And I'm really glad that happened, because the boundless freedom of this open world is like no other. Gravity Rush 2 expands on its predecessor by giving you a massive sprawl of floating islands to traverse. The game forces you to view it from a different perspective. In any other game, you'd look out to the horizon and marvel at how far you can travel. In Gravity Rush 2, you look up and down as well as out. In fact, play it enough and you'll soon realise up and down kind of lose their meaning. It's more like here and there. Because if you're walking on the ceiling, then the ceiling's no longer the ceiling, is it? It's the floor. Except it's not, because the floor... Look, you can bend gravity to your will and pick up people accidentally and make them fall to their death. Accidentally. So yeah, eat that, physics. Now, we've all heard of the butterfly effect, haven't we? It's a beautifully poetic illustration of how the tiniest of actions can instigate a chain of events with enormous consequences. A butterfly flaps its wings at the bottom of your garden. It rains in New York. I ask my dad for Metal Gear Solid for my birthday 18 years ago. Dave suffers a lifetime of trauma, including nightmares about whiteboards every time he sleeps. You save a man from dying in a fire in 1950. 55. He takes over the world and everything goes to sh Singularity was a gem of an FPS released on PS3 in 2010. It had the kind of schlocky sci-fi plot that didn't make you suspend your disbelief so much as eject it completely into the bin of your subconscious, along with all the other things you don't need anymore, like the Times Tables song and your MySpace password. Also, you get to play with the TMD, or Time Manipulation Device, an object that looks science right in the face and said you can use the TMD on objects to send them through time or even on enemies to age them and slow them down it can be used to restore broken objects to a time when they weren't broken and it can also be used to just shoot things. Real life benefits of a time manipulation device would be huge. For example, I could fast forward this script to a point in time where it's just finished. Or rewind this badger to a time when he didn't smell like the inside of an old slipper. Or better yet, didn't exist at all. There are many games that play around with the idea of time travel. It's a dream that's fueled science fiction for decades. And our third entry, Titanfall 2, has loads of fun with the idea of hopping back and forth between two timelines within the same physical space. Titanfall 2 was full of exciting one-off moments of design brilliance that bit inside the research facility on Typhoon, just one of them. Here you could laugh in the face of the second law of thermodynamics. <laughs> Ah, watch me ride that arrow of time right back where it came from, second law. 
by jumping back in time to before a big explosion ruined everything and then switching back to the present where there are, just to rub reality's nose in it, dinosaurs. Naturally, this was loads of fun and was one of those wonderfully clever bits of game design that by extension made us feel really clever as well. Oh, I've worked out that I can switch timelines mid-jump and get through this bit. Wow, I'm so good at games! Also, it gives you that smug sense of superiority over your enemies. You can see them there in the past but you get ready for them in the present and then BANG! Unsuspecting idiot guards who can't hop between timelines have no chance against a super clever player controlled hero who can. See you yesterday, suckers. Next up, we've got Portal, a game that uses the laws of physics to genius effect in every aspect of its gameplay. Apart from that bit, yeah, the bit that happens all the time where you magically stitch two points in space together using a pair of linked wormholes. I mean, flipping at the cheek of it, Portal's all like, thanks science, I'll use all of this physics stuff to make myself one of the best and cleverest puzzle games ever made. But then I'll add in these wormholes. Ha ha ha, you can't do anything about it. Screw you, science. Actually, Rob, the existence of wormholes or Einstein rows and bridges is entirely possible within the known laws of physics. Yeah, but then you'd be able to exist here and here at the same time, and that's just stupid. No, Rob, you're stupid. Look, I'll show you. If we use the two-dimensional space of this piece of paper to illustrate the principle, then if we put two points in space, one here and one here, then if we add a third dimension, we can bend the 2D space like this. And a wormhole can join the two points. Yeah, but I don't understand how you can just fold space up like that. Well, that's why I'm an advanced fellow of particle physics at the School of Physics and Astronomy at Manchester University, and why you're here making YouTube videos. Another game that unwittingly, or perhaps wittingly it's clever enough, provides a sort of illustration of how wormholes might work is Fez, one of the most beautifully designed puzzlers ever made. At first glance, Fez looks like a traditional retro 2D platformer, until you add the magic of the third dimension and suddenly areas of the map that were previously miles apart are almost miraculously brought together. It really is mind-blowing, offering a tiny flash of understanding with regards to the concept of extra dimensions and how they change our perception of reality. These guys, who exist inside a two-dimensional world, would have no understanding of three dimensions in much the same way we'd struggle to grasp with the idea of a fourth and it fundamentally changes the fabric of their reality. It is pure fantasy though, isn't it? I mean, there aren't really extra dimensions. I can point there, I can point there, and I can point there. You know, where else am I going to be able to point? Don't make me come over there again, Rob. Next, we've got Limbo, another gorgeous 2D puzzle platformer, but this time without any hidden extra dimensions to turn your brain into quantum mush. It just has a bunch of all-too-real death animations and a spider from hell's own death colony to turn your brain into nightmare mush instead. Limbo's reality does begin to crack towards the end, however, spoilers if you still haven't finished it. And much like our first entry, you get to flip gravity upside down to solve the last few puzzles. This part becomes extra difficult when you're forced to do this multiple times mid-jump without the boy ever actually touching the floor, but, you know, Limbo's been tricksy with its puzzles the whole way through, why break the habit here? The kicker comes when you break through the glass and find yourself at the game's end, or, as the big revelation hits, the game's beginning once again as the realisation dawns you're trapped in an eternal cycle of torment and quite hard puzzles. Which is a big screw you to the laws of physics in itself. Time is a straight line, not a circle. Everyone knows this. Oh, I don't want to hear it. But Robert... Just enough, okay. Brian. Can Just tell me, is the spider alive again? Oh, well, the uncertainty principle does postulate that the spider is both alive and not alive at all times. My God. 
Our final entry this week is from Dishonored 2, a game that plays with physics like a master pianist, eloquently combining notes to form complex gameplay melodies most of us will probably never even discover. You can stop time, you can bend time, you can blink through space, you can slip into parallel dimensions, you can possess people, link people. And these are just the individual powers, it's how you mesh them together that separates the people who were good at Dishonored from the people who just play Dishonored. Anyway, and some mild Dishonored 2 spoilers incoming, the bit we're talking about from the game, the level A Crack in the Slab in Aramis Stilton's mansion, actually takes away all your powers and replaces them with the ability to switch between two separate timelines, kind of like Titanfall 2, but this time in Dishonored Land. Without ruining the story, the basic setup is that the present day mansion is a bit of a mess, while the past mansion exists just before the event that made it a bit of a mess. The cool thing here is that you can peer into the alternate timeline by means of a magic wrist mounted crystal, enabling you to plan surprise attacks on guard patrols occupying the same physical space but in a different time. As Fez adds a third dimension to a 2D world, Dishonored adds a fourth dimension, time, to a three-dimensional world. That's right, isn't it? Oh, come on, you're not an advanced fellow of particle physics at the School of Physics and Astronomy in the University of Manchester, you're just a badger! Without having to think about it too much, it's just really bloody cool, much like all of Dishonored, an assassin's dream toy box where if you delve deep enough inside, you'll unearth things you never thought possible. And there we have it, seven times video games laughed in the face of physics. If you can think of any other examples, let us know in the comments. Give us a like if you hate being a slave to boring real-world gravity. And don't forget to subscribe for more of these videos every Friday. Thanks for watching.